Everyone's made some mistakes that you feel pretty bad about in the moment. It could be something like your parents asking you to take the chicken out of the freezer while they're gone so that you can have dinner when they get back. And you forget to do that and the panic that overcomes you when you realize that you forgot to do it when you hear the door start opening. But you've never done anything as bad as accidentally killing the world's oldest living organism. Today we're going to talk about the bristlecone pine and a special tree called Prometheus and then its successor which is Methuselah. When looking across the world it's very fun to compare things of opposite spectrums. You can have a blue whale compared to the size of an ant. You can have the speed of a cheetah compared to the speed of a sloth. It's fascinating to see the two extremes. But it's a lot easier to compare the speed of something as opposed to comparing the age of something. Age is not something that you can look at and ask, I put up a microphone and go, how old are you? Most of the time they're not going to be able to tell you the truth. When it comes to trees there is a very specific way of determining how old a tree is. Some people may think of the idea of carbon dating, which is how we know how old you know, dinosaurs are. This uses the half-life of various um, elements to determine how old something is. But unfortunately for these shorter-lived organisms, it gives a range and not a specific uh, time. It's not as fun to say, oh, this tree is between you know, 1,000 and 25,000 years old. That doesn't really help us, so we need to be more specific. So the way that we do that is using a type of science called dendrochronology. This is the way that scientists determine exactly how old a tree is. It uses the rings and the growth patterns to see different phases of a tree's life. You have something like the spring where trees are getting a lot of nutrients, they're getting a lot of sunlight and water, and they're growing rapidly. And then you can see a taper off towards the end of the year when conditions are not as positive for growing. So they kind of go dormant during the winter. And you can see these rings uh, if you put up, you know, you take a cross section of a tree, you can see the growth patterns and you can use this type of method to determine how old a tree is. Funny enough, the first person to actually mention using this as a way to date trees was da Vinci. But it first went into practice from two scientists in the 1700s, uh, French scientists, and I'm not even going to try to pronounce their name, but they used a very severe storm a couple years prior to use it as a marker when you cut into a tree that all trees would have this very similar, distinct, tough winter where there was not a lot of growth going on. So that's how we're able to determine exactly how old a tree is. But now let's talk about Prometheus, the oldest tree that was known on record and what happened to it. In 1964, you have a man named Donald Curry and he's hiking through uh, a very beautiful looking mountain range and he's trying to determine how old a tree is. And by doing that, he tries to use his core to get that reading. Unfortunately, the core gets stuck in the tree and goes up to a, a park ranger in the park that he was in and they determine that the best way to get the core out is going to be to cut down the actual tree. When you cut down the tree, you're able to see the rings, and to his horror, he found out that this is a very old tree. This tree that he killed is called Prometheus, and it is uh, expected to be just under 5,000 years old when the time that it died. The bristlecone pine is the world's oldest living organism, and you may have some people that'll go, oh, what about that quaking aspen called Pando in Utah? Pando is a a clonal organism, meaning that it's one organism but it has been cloned many times. It is the world's largest organism. It takes up a lot of room. The tree takes up 108 acres and weighs 6,000 tons, and it's the world's heaviest organism, but it's not the world's oldest living organism that's non-clonal. That goes to the bristlecone pines and what was Prometheus. Since Prometheus died, the question has to be asked, what is the now oldest living organism? And that goes to a, another bristlecone pine named Methuselah, which is 4,789 years old. And you start doing the math and you realize that that is a long time ago. Based off of that math, this tree germinated in 2,833 BC, which is around 200 years before the pyramids were even created. So that is a very long time for an organism to be around and is still living to this day. So now you know what the oldest living tree is and you wanna go visit it, right? You have this very special organism. You can go see Pando, see up all the 108 acres that it takes up and all of its beauty. You want to go see this tree, right? Unfortunately, there's only, I believe it's less than 10 people that know the exact location of this tree, which makes a lot of sense when you hear the story about what happened to the previous uh, oldest organism. It is hidden from the general public. They have, it's hidden somewhere in the Sierra Nevada uh, mountain range between the border of California and Nevada. Some people know where it is, some people have some rumors, but we do not know for sure, and I think that's exactly how we should keep it. I'll put on the screen right now exactly where you can find bristlecone pines. Its range is severely limited by elevation. This is a tree that lives just below the tree line, and in this area, the reason that it's able to live so long is because the harsh conditions make the tree uh, and the wood very dense. 
When you have something that's grown in ideal conditions, it grows rapidly, which makes the wood less dense. So in these harsh environments with you know, very difficult winters, a lot of wind, they're not growing very fast. And so as a result of that, you have very dense wood that makes it resistance to insects, um, fungi, and diseases because it's very difficult to you know, pierce through that actual wood. Also being at this very high elevation where there's not a lot of other uh, plants growing, it has a much lower risk of being killed by a wildfire and that dense wood actually makes it more resilient to that. Over time, the tissue in the tree starts to die off and that's when I put up you know, pictures of these beautiful trees. A lot of the times it looks pretty dead. You might look at it and go, are you sure that's still living? These trees can just have just a strip of tissue living uh, after all of these years, but it is very resilient and because of the dense wood, it stays living for a long time. So that's the story of the bristlecone pine. We had the previous uh, oldest tree accidentally cut down by a man in 1964, and now the current whereabouts of the current uh, oldest tree, Methuselah, is unknown to the general public, and that is a great way to protect it for the foreseeable future. If you do want to go see bristlecone pines, you can find them up in the Sierra Nevadas. Uh, and if you want to go to a park, the Great Basin National Park is actually a place where you can see the original tree, uh, Prometheus. Uh, there is a cross section of it in the visitor center if you want to go take a look at that. They're absolutely beautiful trees. The high elevation makes it very difficult to go up and actually see them, but they are beautiful trees and I hope to go see them one day. So if you're having a rough time and feeling pretty down, just be happy that you didn't accidentally cut down the world's oldest living organism.